Hello and welcome to Airlines 101 with Laura. Today I want to talk about the 10 9 page and OPSPEC C78 and takeoff minimums for Part 121 operators. Now I just recently uploaded a video all about Part 91 takeoff minimums and we looked a little bit at this page, the 10-9 page from Jepson. And this is an old chart, please don't use this for navigation or anything like that, but um, what I want to get into is a discussion of OPSPEC C78 and how this page that Jefferson creates for 121 operators, it really exists for 121 operators to apply their OPSPECs at various airports. So let's get into some examples of that. First off, here's an op spec. I've blacked out some stuff here and I've, I've cut it down some so you can see it better. But uh, this is op spec C78 and almost all part 121 operators are going to have this op spec available to them uh, in their op specs, assuming they're approved for it. So what I really want to point out here on this op spec, it says in part A, that the certificate holder can use lower than standard takeoff minima. Now, what is standard takeoff minima? If you look at 14 CFR 91175, you see that for a one and two engine aircraft, the standard takeoff minimum is one statute mile visibility, or for a three or four engine aircraft, the standard takeoff minimum is prescribed as half a mile visibility. And it says very clearly in 91175 that this applies to part 121 operators and also part a few other parts. This is going to focus on 121. So this C78 says right here that we can use lower than standard takeoff minimums in accordance with everything set out in this ops spec. Okay, so then it says under, I've cut out B because I didn't want to talk about that part of it, but B, um, let's go into C. So it says, when our takeoff minimums are equal to less than applicable takeoff minimum, we can use lower than standard takeoff minimum, provided we have certain things. Um, so in looking at section D here, we see a few things. We can use touchdown zone of RVR of 1,600 feet at the beginning of the takeoff roll or a visibility value of a quarter mile, quarter statute mile, provided at least one of these visual aids is available. So we have high intensity runway lights or the hurl, center line light system on the runway and runway center line markings. Now, the airport where I fly out of is East Texas Regional Airport. We don't have centerline lighting, uh, but we do have runway centerline markings. Um, and so I don't have the avail, I don't have centerline lights, but, but if you look at D, it says one of the following things has to be available. And then in number four down here, the last point, it says, if you don't have hurl centerline lights or centerline markings, you can still depart with a quarter mile visibility as long as the pilot has something called adequate visual reference to continuously identify the takeoff surface and just make the airplane keep going straight through the whole takeoff roll. Okay, so that is lower than standard takeoff minimums. And it lets us go down to 1600 RVR or a quarter mile visibility. But um, if you read on into this op spec, you get some operators may have an extra level so we can get even lower visibility. Now, why do I care? Because under part 121, you know, if I'm going by 91175, I, as a part 121 operator, cannot take off unless I have certain visibility requirements. If you watch my other video about this, part 91 operators, we can take off zero, zero in a lot of cases. Legal, not necessarily smart, but legal okay part 121 is not allowed to do that you cannot just take off zero zero that's what opspec c78 is all about so let's keep reading on to the next part of the opspec um, and we'll see what what this is talking about this says this uh, is it's taken from a airline opspecs 
doesn't matter which one. But this air carrier was authorized to do operations with as low as RVR of 600 feet, 600 feet, 600 feet. Um, this is on 600 feet on the touchdown zone RVR transmissometer station that looks 600 feet on the middle of the runway and 600 feet on the rollout end. Okay, as long as available was high intensity runway lights and center line lights. So notice that word and right in the middle there. Okay, so it says under F that the certificate holder can do what it says in table one provided certain things. Okay, um, and it talks about some different levels. Um, what I really want to focus in on is point two here that the touchdown zone RVR can be as low as a thousand feet and the middle RVR a thousand feet, provided we have a couple things available operating runway center line lights or high intensity runway lighting and runway center line markings. Okay, so that would get us down to taking off at 1,000 RVR. That's good, but I'd really like to get down to taking off at RVR 600 feet. So to find out what's needed for that, we have to continue reading this op spec. This says we can use a 600 foot RVR under number three, down here at the bottom, number three, it says we can take off with a 600 foot RVR as long as the RVR is working and all of these things are available. And we see that it says we have to have the high intensity runway lights and we have to have operating center line lights. Okay, so I need both the high intensity runway lights and the center line lights to be working. If those are both working, then if you read back up to E, it says we can go down to 600 feet, 600 feet, 600 feet RVR. That's pretty low visibility, but, but that's why we need both the hurl and the center line lights to be working. So, okay, I promised I was gonna get to Jeppesen charts that look like this. This is the 10-9 page for San Francisco. And this helps us in, interpret our own op specs, okay? It means you still have to know your op specs. If you're operating under part 121, you still have to know what C78 says, but Jeppesen produces this chart to help us uh, interpret and apply it. Okay, so uh, starting over here on this side of the chart, we see the abbreviation STD, that stands for standard, and they publish right there on the chart, our, our 91.175, three and four engine, and one and two engine minimum visibility. Great, we already talked about that. We'd like to get lower than one mile visibility required for my two engine aircraft. So we then can move over to this area that says adequate visual reference. And notice it says RVR 1600 or a quarter mile. Okay, if you think back to our op spec, that is exactly what it said. That's what it said on the first part of my op spec, it said, that I am allowed to use a 1600 foot touchdown zone elevation or a our, uh, visibility of a quarter mile as long as we had adequate visual reference available. So that's good, okay. That is what it means by adequate visual reference if we have that op spec. And then, oh, and keep in mind, this is all applicable to runways one left and right, okay. But, you know, I, I still, I'd like to get lower. I'd like to be able to allow my flight to be dispatched and even lower visibility. So let's keep moving over. Okay, on runway one left and right in San Francisco, we have two RVRs available only. And I can see that because I only have a touchdown zone and a rollout RVR indicated. All right, so if I have adequate, I have center line lights or I have runway center line marking and high intensity runway lights available, then I can depart with two RVRs that are each saying a thousand. Okay, two of them are required. It does give us that note there, all right? But if I have center line lights and high intensity runway lighting, I can get even lower RVR. Now, I want you to look at something here though. This says touchdown zone RVR five and rollout of, of five. That stands for 500 RVR, but 
with this particular airline's op specs, go back to this, this said our lowest authorized RVR was 600. Okay, so you will find this. There's a disagreement here. This airline cannot take off at 500 RVR because OPSPEC C78 very clearly says in several places they can have a takeoff RVR of 600, but it doesn't say that we can go to 500. Okay, so going back to my Jeppesen chart, you will find this where it says that I can take off with 500 RVR, but op my OPSPEC trumps whatever Jeppesen says here. So I would be limited in this case to an RVR, and maybe I can draw it right on here, um, to an RVR, uh, no, I can't draw on here, anyway, of 600 RVR. Okay, so that's on runway one left and right. Uh, one other thing I guess I want to point out on here, um, let's look at runways 2A left and right. Okay, so we do still see a minimum climb gradient published, so that applies to everything under this area. We still see the area for standard takeoff minimums for one and two engine aircraft. It's it's RVR 5000 or one mile. It's from 91, 175. We still see the adequate visual reference available. Okay, again, remember this is all if our airplane can climb at 351 feet per nautical mile to 1300 feet um, MSL. Uh, and then we can move over to this part, which has, again, the same type of information, except you notice that we've got uh, three RVR transmissometers available on runway 28 left and right, which makes sense if I look at 10 left and right, I also have the, the three available. Okay, so um, that is what this, this means. So this means that we can take off with 1,000 RVR if we have centerline lighting or runway center line marking and high intensity runway lighting all right if if we want to get down to the rvr that's even lower whatever's in my c78 and this airline's op specs i showed you it's 600 rvr then i have to have center line lights and high intensity runway lighting why would our center line lights maybe not be available well it could be notumed out of service uh, why would the high intensity runway lights maybe not be available? Again, it could be notumed out of service. It could be covered in a snowbank. Um, as far as my runway centerline markings, what if those were unserviceable because the whole runway is covered in snow? So these things would be marked on the notums and I would have to look at that information to see more of what is available. But that is important to check the notums before we begin departure because if all the runway lights are for some reason not available. We don't have any center line lights. We don't have any high intensity runway lights for some reason, like today there's a bad jam at the airport. I could still take off with adequate visual reference, assuming my pilot assume that feels that we can maintain adequate visual reference with an RVR of 1600 or a quarter mile if I have OPSPEC C78. All right, one final example. So here is a smaller airport that I've got pulled up in Eureka, California. And this is a, a dual use page. So Jeppesen will publish these 10-9 pages, some of them for smaller airports. We have an airport diagram at the top. We got all our runway information, runway lighting, and all this fun stuff here. But at the bottom, we do still have a takeoff minimum section that's published. So uh, that is handy for me. Um, and let's see if I can yeah, zoom in on that. So that's super handy because again, as a part 121 operator, now I can use this to apply OPSPEC C78. So in particular, I, I want to actually look at um, runway 14, for example. So here's runway 14. And we have to have a minimum climb gradient 445 feet per nautical mile to 900 feet MSL. Notice on runway 14, the only things listed are standard and adequate visual reference. There is nothing about anything with the RVR of 1,000 or even RVR 5,000 under one and two engine. That's because runway 14 has no... Um, it does not allow us to use those, it does not allow us to take off with anything below adequate visual reference of a quarter mile visibility. So um, 
that is just what is set up for that airport. I cannot assume that I can take off. Okay, on runway 32, we are allowed to use the lower, even lower than my adequate visual reference. I do have some um, centerline lights, runway centerline marking and hurl allowing me to take off with 1000. But because of this airport and how it's set up, I'm not sure if it's climb gradients or what, but we have a minimum climb requirement and we also have only adequate visual reference available. So now I cannot just take off with a thousand um, RVR on runway one four. So on runway three two though, we could do that. We could apply OPSPEC C78 and definitely get adequate visual reference or if things are working, go even lower. Or if everything's working, center line lights and high intensity runway lights. In this example, I could go as low as my RVR 600 feet again because of um, this oops, wrong one because of this air carrier having this lowest authorized RVR of 600 feet on their OPSPEC C78. Why would that vary? Uh, sometimes it's just due to different training requirements, um, what the airline has equipment for in their aircraft, and heads up display or not heads up display. So it just really varies. Important to know your OPSPEC C78 and how you can use this page on Jefferson 10-9 pages or this page to interpret OPSPEC C78. Hope that was helpful to you. Keep watching for more videos about interpreting regulations to come in the future. Don't forget to like and subscribe my channel. It really helps. Thanks guys.